What's up everybody, it's Keith from Keith Keith Productions and on this video, we're going to take a look at mixing background vocals. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, please feel free to subscribe, hit the like button and the notification bell to get more videos like this. Okay, so in this video, I wanna to talk to you about mixing background vocals. And with this video, what I don't wanna do is make this a specific how-to um, approach background vocals. Uh, like in music, along with many other, th other things, music is very subjective, and the changes that you wanna make and you do make are all predicated on the music that you're making, the style of the song, the genre, the artist, uh, the production, a lot of variables. So in this video, I actually just want to go through uh, some things that you should consider or you should think about or you should address kind of when you are approaching background vocals. Now, background vocals, depending on the genre of the song and depending on how the song is actually laid out, can serve as the main vocals of the song or they can actually sing the same thing as the lead vocal usually does and supports the lead vocal so these are just things you want to consider depending on if the background vocals are carrying the song or if they are just supporting the lead vocal of the song just different things you want to think about and just to keep on your mind when you are actually approaching the mixing stage of it. So the song that we're going to be looking into today is a song called Better by the artist by the name of Tiffany Cherie. Uh, it's produced by Cedric Thompson and uh, the engineer actually on the song, because the song already is released, uh, the engineer for this song is John Yash. So the song is already released. I'll leave a link in the description below. Please go stream the song. Go listen to it. Um, if you are in the gospel producers community, then these stems are available to you if you are in the course that's actually taught by John Yash and this is my approach to that song and this is the song we're actually going to use to go through the background vocals and some things that you should consider when you are mixing background vocals so now that we're in the doll I'm going to play uh, the background vocals on the chorus of the song just so you get an idea of what's going on I'll play it with all the processing and everything that I did already on it uh, and then we will break down why I did what I did and some things that you should consider when you're actually dealing with background vocals as well so let's go come on can we just talk to our father right now lift it up and say your love All right, cool. So that's the chorus of the song. And as you can hear, the background vocals are going, your love is better. And that's basically what the background vocals are doing throughout the whole chorus. Um, and we can see that the background vocals are actually singing the main part of the chorus. And the lead vocalist, Tiffany, she's actually ad-libbing uh, and singing through the chorus uh, in the style that she wants to over top of the background vocals that are the main kind of vocal element inside the chorus. Um, so what we are going to do is... We are going to go over why I did what I did and some things that you should consider when you're actually mixing background vocals. So first first thing I want to say is that these background vocals, all of these are kind of in a stereo track form. Um, a lot of them aren't stereo. There's really only one of them that's actually a true stereo track. I actually got to see John Yash when he recorded these background vocals. All these background vocals were recorded on the same mic. Uh, but when it came to uh, the main vocals of the backgrounds, uh, it was in an omnidirectional uh, polar pattern. And all of the background vocalists actually sang into that mic together as one group. 
Uh, one thing, especially in gospel music, when it comes to background vocals, uh, you definitely want to consider the blend between, uh, you know, alto, soprano, tenor, bass, if you have one. Um, so actually singing it in together as a group at one time in an omnidirectional uh, pattern on the, on a microphone, sometimes it's a good way to get a great blend so that the engineer, it's not your job to guess kind of like what voicing is louder than the others. Uh, good vocalists usually already kind of understand the tone that they're going for so they can figure out that blend together. So sometimes it's good to do that. So we do have one track here. This track right here uh, is the track that they actually, it's, it's in stereo form, um, that they sang on this omnidirectional mic. Um, so this is the true stereo track. Everything else is kind of like a mono, or I tr treated it kind of like a mono style track. So meaning, uh, background vocals usually, if you have them in pairs, you can always pan one to the left and one to the right. Now me, when I do background vocals, I really do pan hard left and hard right for background vocals, just so that the center of the stereo, mi the center of the stereo mix and mono in the middle is uh, room for the lead vocalist. Um, so when you have background vocals singing individually uh, in mono, you can pan left, right, left, right, left, right, and have it an even balance on both sides of the stereo mix. Um, so we have one stereo track, uh, and then we have a couple of tracks that are, are treated as in mono form. So one voice is just one voice um, saying once it was just bounced out in, in stereo, but uh, one voice, mono voice, and I have those panned a certain way. So let's actually go through uh, what I actually did for these background vocals. So as we see right here, I have one soprano track. I have one alto female track right here. I have an alto male track right here. I have a tenor track, another tenor track. So all of these are different voices. Uh, and as we see out of these four, I have one alto pan to the left, one alto pan, pan to the right, one tenor pan to the left, one pan, tenor uh, pan to the right. Um, and then, but if we look at the soprano, it was only one soprano voice. So what I ended up doing in Cubase, because this was exported in a stereo format form, I actually used the Stereo Enhancer stock plugin. Uh, it's panned at like 170 percent yeah 170 percent usually i don't pan stuff that hard when i'm kind of taking a mono track and kind of making it stereo um but you know it's panned like that so that it's a great width uh, among the stereo spectrum so that the soprano voicing can reach you know from your left ear all the way to the right ear um and so I have that there on that one track only because there's one soprano track that I have. Now, there's diff different ways that you can go about that. You can always um, duplicate that track and kind of add like a doubler effect on the second track or, you know, tune up or tune down and delay and pitch shift. A lot of different things to actually uh, simulate two uh, soprano voices. I just used this plugin. Um, these background voices were tracked very, very well. Uh, by John Yash, um, one of the best in the gospel industry. industry. Um, so there's not a lot uh, of things that we necessarily had to do. Matter of fact, let's play the background vocals and solo with all the effects on, and you can kind of hear uh, what's going on. And I'll actually um, take everything off as well so you can hear what's going on. Solo. Your love All right, cool. So as we hear, this was tracked very, very well, even without the effects. Of course, with the effects on, you can hear how much brighter it got uh, in the mix stage. But they, these were tracked very, very well. And what I did, um, we already went over the panning of it. We already went over the spacing of it. A good way, especially with background vocals, to get a good, clean balance and a good, clean mix and presence in a song is to make sure, number one, that you're balanced left and right. Um, and the other way is that you can really make sure that 
uh, you you make them very present in the song is that you remember that the background voices, even though you have individual voices, is still one piece to the puzzle, still one instrument, almost like drums. Even though the drum set has the kick drum, the snare drum, uh, you have all the times, you have the hi-hat, you have the ride cymbal, you have the overheads, you have the room mic. Even with all of that uh, being very single as an instrument, you understand that it is one instrument overall. Therefore, uh, you want to attack everything kind of as one instrument. And it's kind of an outside first, then looking in type of approach. So what I ended up doing is I ended up, I ended up uh, taking all of these background vocals and I bust them down to this track right here called the BGV Bust. And this is where I do all of my processing. Now, being though that I know these tracks were all tracked by the same microphone, these tracks were tracked the same way, um, and so and even when you listen to each track individually, once again, these are all things that you should consider. I understood that there wasn't too much low end, so I didn't need to do any EQing uh, individually of carving yeah, carving out the low end. And the compression was already there when John Yash actually tracked these vocals. So there wasn't individual compression on the individual tracks that I actually wanted to do for this. It kind of was ready to all be treated as one single voice. And as we also see, volume wise, I'm at unity gain on every single on every single track. I legit just did not touch the volume individually for any of the voices. When you bust all the tracks down to one bus, that then becomes the fader for and the volume for all of the voices. Now, if you do, if you are in a situation where one voice is more, uh, louder than the other or the blend isn't exactly the way you want it, you have the flexibility of adjusting one over the other other to make sure that all of the tracks have the correct blend that you want because all of these tracks do have the correct blend that I think it's just perfect and if it sounds right and it feels good then it's probably right and it probably is good there's no need to fix it and just because you're used to doing things on every track you ever worked on does not mean you need to do it on the next track you're working on so I have all the volume set at unity gain I have everything bust down to this BGV bus. Now let's take a look at exactly what I have going on. So the very first thing I have going on in this chain is the 76 um, compressor, the CL CLA 76. Um, this compressor, I don't have it doing a lot. So let's take a look at what this compressor is actually doing. Come on, can we just talk to our father right now? Lift it up and say your love. So let's actually see what this compressor is doing. Your love is better. Your love is better. All right, cool. So at the very most that this compressor is doing for the song is about 5 dB of gain reduction. And this being the first um, compressor in the chain, when you're dealing with a lot of voices into a bus, you definitely don't want to over compress it that there's no dynamics, especially in a song like this where background vocals, um, vibrato could kick in at any time and the dynamic range just increases so much. So I do have the ratio set at 4 to 1. Um, the input is set at 30, output set at 18. It's not doing a lot. I just want it enough to make sure that all the voices together sonically are co uh, are, are consistent. So definitely taking away, away a lot of those peaks, but not doing too much compression that you lose the dynamics that's going on, uh, the dynamics that are going on for the background vocals. Cool. And usually when I deal with the background vocals, I deal with the EQ first, but I felt like like subtractive EQ and correcting anything that I feel like is off. I actually did that at first and I really couldn't find anything that um, 
I was set on. And just and just because you're used to doing something like that does not mean that you need to do it on the next song. So there wasn't any frequencies that really popped out as crazy and harsh. Um, some 3K stuff, not it wasn't really crazy. It wasn't really harsh, especially with a lot of voices. So once again, the way you track something, and this goes for anything, if you can get it right at the source, it makes the mixing job a lot easier at the end. So that is the CLA 76 that I have on there. Um, the next item in the plugin that I have is the API 550 EQ. Um, and this is the A, not the B. Um, and I, so I'm doing a little bit here. I wanted to just get a little bit more high end on the background vocals. Uh, they did sound a bit dark. Um, and I wanted some air under it. I wanted some high end going. So, uh, after the compressor, just getting the peaks together, I wanted to start shaping the sound in the way that I kind of wanted to get it. So we have a little bit of boost going on, uh, at the 12.5 K. Uh, we have a little bit of cutting going on at three uh, at three k because that's in in a vocal range. That's kind of where a lot of the harshness goes on. Um, and then I have a bit cutting at 50, 50 hertz, uh, just because there's a lot of voices and I didn't do any um, any uh, passing low end passing. I definitely wanted to uh, make sure that I wasn't getting anything crazy jumping up out of me uh out in the mix that's you know rumbles and and just anything else that could be in the mix that you don't audibly hear at first so i'll play this um we'll play this with the track uh off and then we'll cut it on and see what it's doing come on can we just talk to our father right now Lift it up and say your love So I don't know if you can hear exactly what's going on, but you definitely hear it when they say is better is you can hear all the breath up under that S actually popping up. So let's let, let me actually play it again. Let's do this in solo and let's see if you can actually hear what's going on. So this is before. Your love is better. Cool. We'll play it with. Cool. So up at the 12K range, a lot of times your ears may not audibly hear it, but especially with EQs like this, that's not necessarily uh, parametric uh, and where you can dial in on one specific frequency only, uh, it kind of, it, it'll, it's, it's kind of like a shelf. So there's a lot of um, there's a lot of more frequencies that are being lifted with it. So even though it's saying like 12K uh, down to 10K a little bit. Uh, you can kind of hear a lot of breathiness, a lot of air actually being put under the vocals and not too much. And when, uh, especially when something is tracked right, but any, uh, any track um, that you're dealing with, you kind of want to be uh, intentional about the plugins that you're using. And then all of the plugins together make a big sonic difference at the end. Uh, you kind of don't want to overdo it with one plugin or the other all the time. Try to go small, try to go slow, do micro increments of adjusting and then see how the sound actually shapes out at the end. So that is the API 550A EQ I have going on. Next thing, in the chain, I actually have some distortion going on, some saturation. This is the Abbey Road Saturator. Uh, this is the, um, so I use this not a lot. I don't use this saturating plugin a lot. Uh, I use like Saturn a lot um, for a lot of the things that I'm doing. Um, but for this, I actually use the Abbey Road Saturator plugin. They actually have a preset on here called Vocal Cleanup. That's actually Vocal Clean, Box Clean, something like that. Um, it is the vocal cleanup. Yeah, vocal cleanup. And it actually does that. Now, with presets, you definitely want to do adjustments. There's no one size fits all for anything. But I actually like this preset and what it actually was doing. Uh, we can, let's actually hear it um, in the mix before and after. So, this is before. Come on, can we just talk to our father right now? Lift it up and say yo. With you 
All right, let's listen to that in solo. Without. Your love is better. Cool. With. Your love is better. Whoa. So with saturators, they really add a lot of excitement, a lot of harmonics to the information that is already there. So you want to be careful when you're using saturation and distortion, especially on background vocals. Um, a lot of times it does bring a lot of clarity uh, and a lot brings a lot of harmonics as well. But if you are being if you use it too much, sometimes you're adding too much excitement to frequencies um, that you kind of don't want. Uh, and of course, it makes them uh, sound more lively, but you just want to be careful with it because you're introducing a little bit more harmonics and information than what you normally would have been. But as we see what's going on here, especially with this plugin, it's cleaning up the vocals, it's giving a lot more air, especially with the API 550A that we had on. Um, I do have the um, pre EQ on and the post EQ on. A lot of times I'll play with this post EQ uh, because sometimes it adds. Uh, I don't sometimes I don't like the way how it adds um, a lot of high end to uh, to this actual preset and to this mix that I'm doing. So sometimes depending on what mix I'm working on, I'll cut that off and go after it with another EQ or I use like the Slate Fresh Air, uh, Slate Digital Fresh Air plugin or something like that. And I'll use that for the post EQ. But I felt like for this, this worked just fine. As you can see, it's like a high shelf. Uh, a high shelf and it is at and as you can see I have the mix set right around almost near 80 to 90 percent uh actually in this vocal cleanup mix it actually makes a big difference matter of fact I'll play let's actually just play a bit of it and I'll just take the mix all the way down and you can actually hear what's going on Cool. So you see how much excitement it actually brings to the vocals. Now, because this vo this mix is very, very dense, there's a lot of instruments going on. There is a lot going on. And because the background vocals are a very important part to the overall song, I wanted to make sure that they were being heard. So I do have that the mix set pretty high on that. Usually I'm around the 50% guy on any saturating plugin, but that is the Abbey Rhodes saturator plug saturator. So it it works for this mix, and whatever works, that's what you use. You don't need every plugin or anything. So the next thing on the chain is a deesser. This is the Sibilance plugin by Waves. Uh, the only the other deesser that I will use would be the Pro DS by Fab Filter. This is a very great plugin as well. Um, to uh, incomparable to the Pro deesser. What I like about this plugin is um, is that this detection mode right here, especially when you're dealing with background vocals. Once again, these are things you should just consider when you're dealing with background vocals and you're getting multiple vocals coming into one bus or in at one time, uh, you'll get a bunch of S and T's and a lot of things that are very sibilant that you need for it to attack all of them. Now, granted, because these vocals were tracked very well and all at the same time, um, there's not a lot going on as far as timing of the S's. Usually all of them are on point and all at the same time. But what I like to do with this detection mode is um, over here on the left, it narrows it down to more of like a peak. So if you want to pinpoint in on a sibilant frequency, a sibilant frequency, you can. But then it kind of shelves it out the more you turn it to the right. And if you have multiple sibilant frequencies coming in one time, turning it to the right usually would do a good job of getting all of those uh, around the similar time that they hit. Um, it's a DSing plugin, so once again, um, it's nothing too special. Um, and the the other thing about this track that I did with this is, um, is that 
because they're saying because the background vocals are a very important part of the song and your love is is better because that is is so prominent i didn't want to take too much too many s's out that at one point it sounded like your love is better <laughs> your love is better and I didn't want it to sound like that, so I backed off of it a lot. Usually, um, when it comes to DSing, you can DS on every single track, regardless if they were all sang together or not, to kind of take down on those S's. Um, you really only need one S when it comes to multiple voices. You don't need a lot of S's poking through your mix. Um, nevertheless, before, after, we're in the mix. Here we go. It's better. so you get the end of the s and is and that's really what i wanted that's really what worked for the song for me uh i once again you overdo a ds sometimes it sounds like you know uh they're not saying the word that they really intended to say so the last thing in my inserts that we actually have going on in this bgv bus is a cla 2a compressor now i love this 2a compressor i actually have an outboard uh warm audio wa 76 i love my 76 style compressor whenever i'm recording vocals in but as far as mixing goes i love this 2a over the 76 style compressor now with this compressor i do a lot of my volume a lot of my volume uh it's with this compressor and because i like this i like this compressor because um because especially with dynamic voices it gives the flexibility in the room for those dynamics to actually hit the compressor and the compressor won't stay uh exactly where it is so you know how with your attack and release times on like a 76 style compressor or just any other compressor you know a lot of times the, it holds dynamics a little bit long sometimes it's tough to get the dynamics to move the way you need them to move and sometimes the dynamics and sometimes the dynamics are held a little bit too long so usually the cla 2a i like to put that at the end and the one other thing about the cla 2a is that the CLA 2A comes with a lot of volume with it, so you want to be careful uh, to actually hear for those changes. Uh, I do use the volume, uh, the gain knob right here on the CLA 2A quite a bit when it comes to certain volumes for background vocals, only because I'll get my level set at a great level, and then sometimes if I feel like the dynamics need to be heard just a little bit more, I'll turn the gain up and down until the volume's at a good point rather than just messing with a fader. Uh, so this is before and after. You can hear exactly what I'm saying with the gain changes. So here we go. It's better. What an amazing God. What an amazing love you have for us, your love. It's better. Your love is that fast. Cool. So, and as we see on the CLA 2A, um, the most compression that we're actually getting throughout the whole song is about 10 dB of compression. This song is very dynamic and at the highest is compressing around 10 dB. And then I do have the gain set to 40. This gain does boost the audio a lot. So please be aware of that. Just because something got louder doesn't necessarily mean, number one, that you did what you intended to do. And number two, it does not mean that the song, that's what's needed for the actual song. Okay, cool. So that is everything that I have in the inserts of my background vocals. So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually look at the sends that I have going on um, for this back in this background vocal mix. So the first thing that I have this being sent to is that I have it being sent to a reverb. Um, I call this the BGV reverb. So usually I deal with multiple reverbs. This time I felt like one was enough. Um, so, and we have the Valhalla Vintage Verb. 
I love Vahala's um, plugins. I just love them so much. So what we're doing is we have a, a almost a two and a half uh, decay. So it's a bit. It's a, it's a it's a lot of room for the background vocals. I, I usually always around set my pre delay to twenty milliseconds. Um, and you can kind of see everything else that's going on. I always EQ. I don't have the EQ kind of set on the reverb. I always EQ my um, reverbs actually in my channel settings. As you can see, I'm doing a lot of high end cutting and a lot of low end cutting, especially with background vocals. Um, a lot of that will ruin the mix real quick. If you have too much reverb, especially coming from the sides all crazy, it, it's a nice effect. But if you have too much of it, it ruins the mix. It swallows the mix up. It drowns it. So this is what is going on. So let's play. Let's play the mix. And I'll play it. We're in solo. Play it and without it. And I'll edit. Love is better. Cool. And you can see how much room they actually added. Let's play that in the mix before and after. And you can kind of hear what's going on and why we actually added it. So this is it um, without. With. It adds just enough room wanted to add just a little bit of room so that it just didn't sound too dry. And I definitely didn't, didn't want to overdo it with the reverb. Sometimes I have the habit of just overdoing it with the reverb in a mix. Um, but it adds just enough room so that it has a bit of room to live inside of this dense mix. So once again, these are things you just want to consider. Um, the other track, the other send I have it going to, this is actually parallel compression for the background vocals. Um, uh, the BGV parallel comp. Uh, I have it sent before fader only because usually when I'm fader riding or I'm setting volumes, I'll use this Q link button up here. And all of that does is whatever two tracks you have selected together, you move one, they both move together. Um, or you can just use a VCA fader, which will assign a fader to certain tracks. And every time you move that fader, the other tracks will move together. So I have a pre-fader, I mean, um, post-fader, not pre-fader. Um, and I have that sent 100% uh, there because obviously I adjust it with the fader, the, the signal with the fader, fader. So, and what we have here is we have the G bus compressor um from ss the ssl's g bus compressor and what we're doing what i try to shoot for is roughly around 8 to 12 db of gain reduction on parallel compression that's the sweet spot of uh the vocals not being overly compressed and the dynamics still have room to shine okay and what this parallel compression for the background vocals actually does is it, is it actually adds some energy to the background vocals it takes the core of the background vocals and puts it right back in the mix and the compression is just enough so that it's not squashing the background vocals and it's enough for the dynamics to live but it's not so much that it sticks out like a sore thumb it's like taking the core energy of the background vocals and putting it right back in the mix but let's listen to it in solo without and then we'll add it back in Love is better with Love is better Love is better Let's listen to that in the mix So 
So parallel compression is really good for mixes where dynamics throughout the whole song changes. It kind of leaves the background vocals very consistent. I also do parallel compression a lot when it comes to drums. Some elements of the drums, maybe not the whole drum kit at times, but a lot of stuff that needs to stay consistent throughout the song, that compression will allow that signal to stay consistent, although the main channel of the uh, instrument or the vocals that are going on have the ability to live dynamically so that is that channel inside that is that plugin inside my sense the next plugin i have is a bgv delay we're going back to Valhalla. this is the Valhalla delay i have the mode set on hi-fi the error is present um and it's based off of the hi-fi pop vocal delay preset um but i do have some eq stuff going on and i do have uh, my channel that the background vocals are sitting on delayed as well so that I'm not getting a lot of low end and super high end that, uh, that's being delayed as well. I have it set at 32 seconds. So it's just enough to help the reverb get a lot of room. The feedback is set at 9.2%. Let's actually hear this in the mix without and then I'll add it in and you can see exactly what's going on. It's better. With Let's take a listen to that in solo. Without. You know what? For this example, let's cut off the reverb parallel compression. Let's just do the delay. So without. Again. With. And you can hear the tail end, especially on better, how much more room it added. So uh, complementing the the reverb with the delay, they actually serve a purpose together to add just a little bit more room. It's not too much of a delay that's going on. Um, and it's just enough that the vocals, again, can breathe. So the last thing inside of my sense is this throw delay. The reason why I can't cut it on is because we have this automated. Now I do also use this uh, specific throw delay for the lead vocal as well. So the channel's right here. So what we are going to do, I have a holla delay again, it's my favorite delay. So what we are going to do is we'll listen to this before um, and after w in solo kind of with it. So this is without. This is with. It's better. It's better. So let's listen to it before. So let's listen to this. Before, so let's listen to this before and after. We'll do it in the mix first. And as you see here, here are the automation that I have set for it. So this throw is actually only happening on your love, on the word love. That's kind of when the uh, throw is happening. So let's hear it uh, before and after with it. Here we go. Uh, in the mix. It's better. Cool. So let's add that back in. It's better. It's better. What an amazing God. What an amazing love Hello. you have for your love. All right, cool. So let's add that back in. It's better. It's better. What an amazing God. What an amazing love you have for us, your love. Your love is better. Play that again so you can hear it. Your love is better. 
cool. So now you can see what that's doing actually in the mix. And so now let's just cut on everything once again. So we can actually hear all together. Can't cut that on because of automation. So let's actually hear all together what's actually going on for the background vocals with this mix. Come on, can we just talk to our father right now? Lift it up and say your love. All right, cool. So as you hear in the mix, uh, what that throw delay does, what the delay does, the reverb and all of the inserts that we have, how it actually helps give the background vocals life to sit inside a mix. So once again, this wasn't about how to mix background vocals. A lot of the things that we can fix in the mix could be remedied and rectified actually when we record them. So these are just things that you should consider when you're uh, giving a mix or when you're just dealing with background vocals. Maybe they were all recorded on different microphones in different studios. Maybe they weren't all recorded together. Maybe they were sent to you in the wrong file format. Maybe the mix isn't that dense. Maybe it is. Maybe it doesn't need that much room. Maybe the background vocals sing the exact same thing that the lead vocal does and doesn't support the whole chorus of a song. These are the things that I think that you should just consider when you are mixing background vocals. What purpose does the background vocals have in the song? If they are the staple and the foundation of a song, try to use plugins and effects that will make them more of the foundation and the staple of the song. Um, so once again, these are just things that I've done for this song, for the song better. Um, I hope that you can use them. I hope that you found them very helpful. I hope that you found some things that you can consider, maybe some plugins that you never used before, but now that you can use. Uh, and once again, this song is already out. It's better by Tiffany Cherie. And you can go, I actually leave a link in the description below to this song where you can go listen to it. Check it out. This is just my rendition. I hope that this was helpful. Uh, if you need any more tips, you can actually search in the description below. You can get an ebook, free instrumentals, and there's actually tips on recording uh, in the description below. Also, I'm always doing a giveaway. So if you uh, live in the description, you can probably find whatever giveaway that's going on at this time that you're watching this specific video. And if you would, before you leave, Hit the subscribe button, the like button, and the notification bells for more videos like this. And once again, I'll see you in the next video. What can separate me from your love? Absolutely not.